Hi everyone, welcome along today. Now, I'm sure you've all heard of the name Sure Stop. We all know them, they're the stop clocks that you can put in where you can just switch the water off via a switch. All good and great, all okay. But it's about time things got a little bit more modern, isn't it? So, to that end, Sure Stop have given me this to try. And I'm gonna fit and show you how it goes and use the app because now we have Sure Stop with a smart controller so we can now turn the water off from anywhere in the world via a app on the phone that's got to be a great advantage hasn't it <laughs> let's have a look at it here then is all the stuff when you open the boxes up what you're going to get pretty intensive instructions getting started with sure stop Sure Stop how to connect it up. There's lots of instructions here for it. And getting started with Sure Stop, the water control hub. So we've got plenty of bits and pieces here. What I really like as well, we get the Honeywell Lyric water leak and freeze detector. So you get sent a notification if anything should go wrong, which is really great, you can get that water off. You even get included proper Duracell batteries, which is uh, quite a first, isn't it? <laughs> so that's our freeze and leak detector there, our plug, our obviously our cable to connect up, and the plug fits in there for UK, as you can see, it's a UK type plug arrangement. Uh, we have here obviously our router, there she be with a little aerial on her, and our actual tap, and obviously the water controller here. Uh, this is run by batteries obviously and they're the ones there but uh, i do like the fact they are all included and here is our connection cable for the tap itself so pretty all-inclusive kit and i think what i like about it is kind of made to be fitted by the amateur so it should only take around about an hour that's what I say, as long as you can get to the pipes. <laughs> um, but we've also got a little thing in here. In the box you can see, they're quite explicit instructions on how to do the thing itself. It's just fairly quick. And I'm going to take you through fitting this one anyway. And we'll see quite how easy and it is to set up and get it working. So, first thing to do, connect the hub. Okay, so this is quite easy. Which connect the lead Fnet lead out into your other hub. I'm hoping, of course, that you have got a spare port on there. You will need to have one, okay? And obviously, you may need a longer lead than the one that's supplied. Do check with that as well. Uh, simply put it in, uh, it configured pretty quickly. The flashing light means that we're all ready to go there. Uh, then, all you've got to do is pop online and uh, create your account. Next part of the job then, I guess the trick is for most of you, but Sure Stop have tried to make this as easy as possible, giving you everything needed to fit the valve. Now, here's under my cupboard sink where most of you are probably going to find your taps. There's my stop cock there. Now, obviously, I'm going to cut that copper tube there, and you actually get the amount that you need cut out by Sure Stop, which is 34 millimeters. So, you know, you've got to cut a section of pipe out to fit that valve. And 34 is around about there somewhere so before you do anything of course let's turn the main water off via the stopcock and don't be tempted to change your stopcock for this I think they're always better to keep your main one beneath this valve as a foul safe okay so don't replace the stopcock just put it above and we'll be all tickety boo so we'll get the water off next okay just drain everything once the water's off by that I mean open your tap and let any dead water come out okay so there's not too much when you cut through the pipe underneath when you cut through underneath there will be some dead water there so i'll show you that in a minute so I do have plenty of old towels and stuff handy to catch the water as it comes out so put a mark where you want the bottom cut of the tap measure 34 millimeters up with your tape measure and you know well i've just put a rough mark there i don't know how much to cut out that that section there is going to be where the valve is going to sit over so it'll push down to there and up to there obviously the hard part is, is if you've got any plane a tap to push it all back together again you might be better off if you haven't seen if you've got an elbow up here or something you can undo that way and pull it out to give you some movement that's probably the hardest part but usually there's a poly pipe on the end of this tap going down to the floor which gives you a bit of leeway to be able to pull the pipe down and fit it in to the actual shore stop 
best thing to use when cutting your pipe is the old tube cutter like this. Okay, you can get it in and just slot it over the pipe. As I say, don't forget when it's cut through, there's going to be a bit of water drop down there. So don't forget that. But that's the handiest tool for cutting the copper pipe out. Okay, once your tube cutter's bit, hopefully it start to cut round. Pretty nice and easy. When it got near the end, I kind of let what dead water there is slide out slowly. Okay, here it comes. Here comes the dead water. And there we go, we cut through. Hear that go? We're clear, we're done. That's the first chop done. And we cut the next bit off. There we have our piece of copper out ready. So we're now ready to lift the pipe out of the way a bit. Hope we've got a bit of movement and get the valve on. As I was saying, most pipes that come onto the stopcock at the bottom are polyplastic. So you can get this bit of movement like I've got here. Just really going to hate putting that valve on. My valve is going to be up like that. And because it's fairly close to the deck, it's going to be a bit awkward to get those in. So I'm going to put mine in the end connections now of the valve before I actually fit the tap. That, of course, is your choice. It depends what room you've got when you fit yours. But bear in mind, the flow is going upwards. You've got to come up from the bottom. Just a little tip. There's our marks in, so we're ready to push it into the valve now. So we push one in this side. She's well in. One the other side. You can see it there. Does it matter which way round they are? No, it doesn't matter which way. That's okay. Good firm push. And that's it, we're in. And I can see by the marks, I know it's awkward to see, but it's dead right, they're in. Okay, so we're ready now to install our valve. Very important before you go fitting it, there's a flow direction arrow there. Make sure it's going in the right direction before you start inserting it on the pipe. Push this end on first. They just pop on then, do they? Yeah, push fit. Mm. Down the other way. And you can see it slide on there. That's, that's, that's on. Okay, you can check just by pulling it, it won't come off. That's firmly on. So that's our valve in situ with the arrow the right way. <laughs> Next then, going to go to mounting the sure stop water controller. You get two meters of pipe with it. So if you want longer, you can get some more from the sure stop people, a five meter length, but uh, two is generally enough. And obviously you can cut it to length if you want it shorter. Uh, so this depends the next bit now where you're having this. So I'm just going to have this on the back wall of here. So it's kind of on here and it's inside the cupboard. And uh, we'll get that job done next. Same distance again for the controller. Put it apart here. I'm going to put mine in now, the tubes, simply because mine's coming low in the cupboard and it will be awkward with this shelf in a way to push it up into. And in. That's them. They're in. So, once you've mounted your controller, we're about ready to turn the water on and test that everything out is okay. So, just turn your water on, which I've just done, and check the sure tap is all fine and there's no leaks. Once you're sure of that, we're ready to move on to the next part of the job. Oh, one last thing before we go, earth bonding. You may need to re-earth the a wire joint around that valve there, because uh, obviously the plastic disconnect the earth bonding if you need it. If you're worried about the earth bonding you can always consult an electrician. Um, I'm lucky in that sense, I've got a son in lawyer's one, <laughs> so I can get mine checked, but I'm pretty certain it will have to be earth bonded around the valve. Now all we do is turn the controller on, okay, and we now go to our system, what we signed online, to get it set up. And I don't know how long the batteries are going to last on this, I've no idea, obviously it is battery controlled, but you do get a battery status here, so you can see there that we have got three lights at the moment, so that's possibly the only thing we've got to keep our eye on with this. Next on the list of things to do then is to create a sure stop account, just go on, it's a normal sign on routine, and nothing untoward, okay. During the setting up you will be asked to pair the sure stop water controller with the hub. 
It's just a couple of buttons to push, get the on, and the battery stays just buttoned together. Leave them pushed in for 15 seconds, and you'll get a, like a triple flash. All the lights will be flashing up and down on those three LEDs on the left. When that's going on, uh, you can pair up the two devices. Once that's done, you'll get then the screen I've got here. Righto, then next thing, the Sure Stop app, which is there. So we'll open that up and see what it brings. Load it up now, and there we have it. That's great, isn't it? Your water is currently on. Just tap the stop clock above to turn the water off now. I'll tap it. Uh, it says please wait. It does take a minute or two for this to actually register to get the valve off. So I'll give it a minute and we'll just see if it has turned it off. Latest indicator now is that the water is off. It does take about two minutes. I've just roughly timed it. So we go to tap now and see if it is off. We'll turn it on and yep, the water is off. Now it's a lot quicker when you turn it back on, I'll show you. And we'll touch him to come on. Please wait. We have our dinner ready there in the little oven there, ready to go. Hear the valve turning on. Water. Nearly at the end of our installations now, and now it just remains for the Honeywell leak detector. To be loaded on so here's the app for it there right there I've loaded it next door to the sure stop water control so we'll check that now so once you push the app this is the screen you get and as you can see a little forecast thing there and kitchen sink no alerts and I've put that little card on there because it has got my postcode just <laughs> underneath it so under the poly pipe design there's my because so I've had to cover that little bit up so we just take a quick look at the Honeywell leak detector and you'll see that on the other side it takes three batteries and um, also you obviously get this lead which is handy to lay down for more detection area um, it, it goes in the bottom of there to set that plug out and stick this lead in and you can lay it down on the floor maybe put that on the side or something uh, and it won't get immersed in water because if it gets covered in water it will obviously not work anymore <laughs> but obviously your leak detectors are these two pins here which come through the case there and there once it's on but uh, as I say if you use the lead you get a little bit more leak detection because it has to cover that probe there and once that's connected you'll get an authorization of a leak and that's how it works in conjunction with your sure step tap so that you can uh, be notified to get the water off you can hear there's quite a loud buzz when the device detects a leak and also on my mobile here I've been alerted that there is a water leak I have checked actually the facts and information on the water leak detector uh, it's a freeze pipe detector as well freezing conditions and uh, you do get three years life with the batteries on average there we are then sure stop made by polypipe I really like it as you can gather it's a really useful device I think it works off an app situation now I've looked on all the brochure inside and found out a lot of relevant things like the fact that you can actually connect 10 of these sure stops to one hub which is quite useful if you had flats or things like that and you needed multiple valves fitted everywhere I think one other good application would be if you had an F&E system with a, obviously a hot water cylinder you could have put a 22 millimeter one of these valves on the cold fill uh, if you placed it near the bottom end of the cylinder you'd have the required pressure which is going to be a minimum of 0.5 bar okay so any other useful things I think with this you know I did think of one actually really useful thing now if you've got young teenagers you know what they're like in the morning they don't get out of the shower do they you know they go in there and the things running and you can see the water running and the boilers running and you think you know well great idea turn it off get your phone out turn it off what will happen there'll be a scream from the bathroom dad the water's gone off <laughs> and you can say oh Forgot to tell you that water company are doing work down the road, any old excuse. <laughs>
and then that's it, they're out. Just do it a couple of times. They might cut their showering time down a little. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Every handy though, another good use for it. Okay, so anyway, that's it. As you can gather, I do like it. It's all great, it's all working. And with the leak detector as well, a good idea. What can you do? Can't go wrong. Anyway, that's it for me. Great stuff. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time on the channel. You know where to go, Derek and 33. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.